the benefits of the Mediterranean style of eating and eating this, you know, higher fat diet, but good fat diet, high fruits and vegetables, high whole grain, it reduces your risk of some forms of cancer, it reduces your risk of cardiovascular disease and stroke and heart disease, reduces your risk for early onset macular degeneration, which is your eye health. And then the one that really piques people's interest is the decline in risk in cognitive decline and Alzheimer's disease. Eating like those who live in the Mediterranean region has been shown to promote health and decrease risk of many chronic diseases. K-State Research and Extension Family and Consumer Sciences agents recently learned more about this style of diet from Dr. Carolyn Dunn the William Neal Reynolds Distinguished Professor and Department Head of Agricultural and Human Sciences at North Carolina State University. Dr. Dunn is part of a group of nutrition and health professionals from the university and North Carolina Division of Public Health that created Med Instead of Meds, an online resource that provides information and tools to help people transform their eating to the med way. On today's Sound Living, the Mediterranean Diet Eating Plan and health benefits that it provides. Sound Living is a weekly public affairs program produced by Research and Extension at Kansas State University. I'm Jeff Wickman. Dr. Carolyn Dunn says the program is called Med Instead of Meds because they wanted to talk about using pans instead of pills to promote health and decrease risk of many chronic diseases. We want to use food as medicine and hopefully decrease the need for medication for diabetes or heart disease or high blood pressure and use our pans instead of taking the pills. Some of this is kind of tied into blue zones, but you've really gone beyond that and really focused in on the style of eating. Exactly. The style of eating and the lifestyle associated with the what we call the medway. It certainly is very parallel to the blue zones. And when we talk about blue zones, as you know, we're looking at places in the world that people live the longest. And one of those places is the Mediterranean region historically. And it has a lot to do with the way they eat, the way they move, the way they eat together as a community, and the foods that they don't eat as much as the foods that they do eat. I like the way that you narrowed this down to seven ways to eat med. And one of the things you said is this is not a flavor profile. Right. I mean, you can think about eating from the Mediterranean region currently the way they eat, where you think of, well, what's Mediterranean? Well, Greek food would be Mediterranean, and sometimes that could be really high in fat, high in saturated fat, high in lamb, high in white flour, like pastas. If you think about Italian foods, Italy's in the Mediterranean region. So you have pizza that would be a lot of cheese and white flour. That is not what we're talking about. So it's not a flavor profile. It's about the way of eating high fruits and vegetables, olive oil, limiting your sugar. So you could have, like you say, well, I like Asian flavors. Perfect. You can put those flavors into a Mediterranean way of eating that would be high fruit and vegetable, high whole grain high olive oil. In terms of the seven ways to eat med, one of the things you pointed out as being maybe the most important is changing your protein. Arguably, one of the most important things you can do is swapping your protein. So when I say swap your protein, what does that mean? It means we really need to focus on eating a lot of seafood, a lot more seafood than we do eat in the United States, trying to get two to three servings of seafood a week in, and hopefully one of those being a high-fat fish like salmon or mackerel. Not easy to do. I know it's from the American diet, but you can use canned salmon, canned tuna. It doesn't have to always be fresh. And so we want to eat more seafood and more plant proteins and less other animal products. But I did talk about the protein continuum, if you remember. And I do this because I think that we get hung up on saying, no red meat, eat white meat. Well, chicken thighs have more saturated fat than about nine or 10 of the cuts of beef. So We want to be very mindful of not only the kind of meat we're eating, but the cut of meat we're eating. So if you enjoy eating red meat, we want to look at the kind of red meat you're eating and maybe eat a little bit less or a little bit less frequent, but certainly doesn't mean that you have to cut red meat out of your diet completely. We're also talking smaller portions, and you even talked about how you can make those portions go farther. Right. I mean, I love to sit down to a nice, thick hamburger, and and so when I do that, what I do is I mix in a lot of mushrooms into the hamburger so I can get that nice, big-looking hamburger, but it's only a few ounces of beef as opposed to 8 or 10 ounces of beef. So there are tricks that you can do to make the beef go further. Along those same lines, we're looking at swapping the fats and focusing on the healthy fats. Right. I I think that, you know, I came through nutrition when it was fat-free, fat-free, everything fat-free. We even had, you know, fat-free cookies. Oh, they're they're good for you. They're fat-free. And we know now that it's not, the fat is not the demon. It's that we need the healthy fats. We need to swap the unhealthy fats for the healthy fats. 
And the healthy fats include certainly olive oil that's at the crux of the Mediterranean way of eating, but also canola oil or almond oil or hazelnut oil, avocado oil. But the predominant oils that we point people to just because of availability and cost would be canola and olive. And you're not talking deep fat frying everything no. in these oils. These are really used as flavor enhancers. Flavor enhancers and to make your food more delicious. So we want people to eat more fruits and vegetables. Steamed broccoli is pretty boring. But if you mix it in some olive oil and put some chili pepper on it and throw it in the oven and roast it, it's delicious. And so that olive oil as a flavor enhancer, as a drizzle on hummus or as a, a vinaigrette to make your salad saying that's, that's really where we want to get our olive oil and our canola oil. Nuts and seeds are another way then to get those oils? Absolutely. You know, most nuts are high in polyunsaturated, monounsaturated fatty acids, just like olive oil is. And so we want to have, you know, a handful of nuts as a snack as opposed to a processed product. The thing I love about nuts is, and I have some in my backpack right behind me, is they're portable and they keep you satisfied. They have high fat, so you stay full longer. So if you're on the go, keep them in your car, keep them in your backpack, in your briefcase, have a handful of nuts as a snack as opposed to something highly processed. You had a nice little reminder there about how to know how many nuts to eat? A handful, not a double handful, just a single handful, is about an ounce. And and another way to look at it is one, two, three. One ounce of almonds, for the sake of this discussion, is 23 almonds. So you could say you could take your smartphone and put almonds on the cover of it. That would be about an ounce. A shot glass would be about an ounce of almonds. So you want to have that either as a snack, just plain, or top yogurt or fruit or oatmeal with a few nuts try to get two to three ounces a week. And just like with fruits and vegetables, a variety of nuts is good. Absolutely. I I get that question a lot. What's the best nut to eat? All of them are good. Whatever you like best, pistachios, almonds, walnuts. Walnuts have great omega-3, but other nuts are good too. Peanuts, which are not really a nut. They're a legume, but still fit into that category. And seeds too, sunflower seeds, pumpkin seeds, all good. We've talked a little bit about fruits and vegetables. Let's go a little bit more in detail because I like the fact that you said go for colors. And really along those same lines, there's maybe only two things that are vegetables that maybe we want to avoid. Not so much avoid, but understand that when we do eat these two vegetables, which I'm going to tell you which they are in just a second, when we do eat these two vegetables, we're not getting the protective effect that we get with all the other fruits and vegetables. When we eat potatoes and corn, nothing wrong with having potatoes and corn, but they don't seem to have the protective effect against chronic illness that all the other fruits and vegetables have. So when we look at consuming a variety of fruits and vegetables, potatoes and corn certainly fit in there, but they shouldn't be the predominance in the diet like they are currently in America. I'm sure one of the pushbacks you get is cost. But you mentioned that there's a lot of ways to either get around that or at least look for ways to save money. There is. Dried beans are very cost effective. Canned beans are very cost effective. Canned fruits and vegetables, frozen fruits and vegetables. I think sometimes we shy away from them thinking that if it's not fresh, it's not good for us. The only downside to canned and frozen might be some of the salt. So with canned, we can rinse them and remove some of the salt. With frozen, we just want to make sure we're getting frozen broccoli that has nothing else but broccoli or frozen strawberries that have nothing else but strawberries. That's one way to save money. And as far as olive oil is concerned, you can certainly buy store brand. You don't have to buy the most expensive olive oil. You're going to be giving up something, maybe a little tiny bit in flavor if you were an olive oil gourmet, but certainly not giving up anything in in health qualities. And these also have a little bit of aid in either controlling your weight or maybe even helping you to lose weight. Right. I think that we've thought for so long, for many years, that you had to eat a low-fat diet or an ultra-low-fat diet to lose weight or to maintain your weight. And we're now seeing quite the opposite, that people are able to maintain their weight and possibly even lose weight when they're having more fat because it's more satisfying diet. So you tend to stay full longer and not be hungry quicker when you're eating a little bit of fat, even as high as 40%. And, you know, that's unheard of. You know, 10 years ago, you would have said, oh, my gosh, that's way too much fat. But we know that we certainly have a calorie budget and we have to stay within that. But doing that and increasing the fat content really can help. Talk a little bit about the fact that there are so many health benefits that reduce your risk for certain chronic illnesses, chronic diseases. What are some of the benefits? The benefits of the Mediterranean style of eating and eating this, you know, higher fat diet, but good fat diet, high fruits and vegetables, high whole grain, it reduces your risk of some forms of cancer. It reduces your risk of cardiovascular disease and stroke and heart disease, reduces your risk for early onset macular degeneration, which is your eye health. 
And then the one that really piques people's interest is the decline in risk in cognitive decline in Alzheimer's disease. One of the other things you mentioned there was make your grains whole. And that is one of those areas where sometimes we think we're doing what we're supposed to be doing. But unless we look really close at the label, we may not be getting the whole grains. Right. I think that, you know, carbohydrates have gotten a bad rap lately. People wanting to eat ultra low carb or low carb or cutting carbohydrates out of their diet. And really it's the processed, highly processed, refined carbohydrates that we need to cut out of our diet. White bread, white crackers, a lot of processed baked goods and that sort of thing. But the whole grain products is what we want to add into our diet. And eating a grain as a grain. So eating brown rice and quinoa, oatmeal, the grain as a grain as opposed to a food made from grain like bread or crackers. And there is actually a difference, as you pointed out, between oatmeals. There is. There's a lot of different oatmeals on the market. And so we tell people to eat oatmeal. And there's really four different kinds of oatmeal. There's Irish oats or oat groats, and that's the least processed. That's the steel cut oats. They do take longer to cook. And then there's old-fashioned oatmeal, which is only those oats steamed and rolled. That's why they're called rolled oats. Those are the two less processed kinds of oatmeal. And then you have quick cooking oats where they take the rolled oats and cut them in smaller pieces so it cooks quicker. And then your instant oatmeal, it's actually pre-cooked and then dried. All of those are okay. They're all fine. What's not so great are the flavored oatmeals that have a lot of added sugar. So you want to stay away from that and cook your own oatmeal. And even if you want to add a little sweetness, you're controlling how much you add, not the manufacturer. That takes us right into number seven of the ways to eat med, and that is to rethink sweets. Absolutely. The sugar is really important that we look at the amount of added sugar in our diet and decreasing the amount of added sugar. And when I say added sugar, it's sugar added either at the table during the cooking process or by the manufacturer. We're not talking about natural sugars that are included in the food like a a milk or dairy product that has sugar in it naturally or a fruit or a vegetable that has sugar in it naturally. We're talking about sugar that's added to that product. So when you think about, you mentioned oatmeal, you know, you can buy a flavored oatmeal that has a lot of sugar in it and where you can buy an oatmeal that's not processed like that, it has zero added sugar. And you can add a little bit of sugar. We're not saying you can't add a little bit, but you control that. And then looking at the label to see how much added sugar is in that product. And really the cereal aisle may be one of the biggest culprits. Yes, cereal aisle and yogurt aisle. The the thing that, that I love about the added sugar label is if you had strawberry yogurt and you look at the amount of sugar, you have natural sugar in the milk and natural sugar in the strawberries, but then you have also added sugar by the manufacturer and you can't tell the difference between the three. But now you can with the added sugar on the label, you'll be able to see how much of that sugar is added by that manufacturer. One of the things that people are probably wondering about is how do I go about not only picking the right foods, but then preparing these foods? And one of the nice things is you have a website that really addresses that. We do. We have a website called Med Instead of Meds, M-E-D Instead of Meds. And there's over 100 med-friendly recipes there. There's videos to show you about med flips and tips on how you can make the foods that we have there on the website or take the foods that you currently eat and make other choices on the website. There's videos there, cooking tips, the continuum like we talked about, all there for you to start your process to eating the Medway. I got to assume that some of these recipes are pretty quick preparation because we're not doing a lot to them necessarily. That's right. We've taken a lot of fruit and vegetable recipes. We've added lots of flavor with herbs and spices. So most of the recipes are very quick to prepare. You know, some of the ones that are not as quick might could be stepped into, like you have to cook the lentils. It might take 40 minutes. So it's not a lot of hands-on time. You can do other things, but you might make a big batch of lentils and make two or three of the lentil recipes. But yeah, we've taken into account cost, availability, and taste. I think in all things eating, you have to consider taste and what people have access to as far as cooking skills. Because we know cooking skills vary, so we have things on the website, even for the novice cook, even for the non-cook. That's Dr. Carolyn Dunn, the William Neal Reynolds Distinguished Professor and Department Head of Agricultural and Human Sciences at North Carolina State University. To learn more about the Mediterranean diet, visit medinsteadofmeds.com. This year's Walk Kansas which starts on March 15th and runs through May 9th, will include information on Blue Zones and the Mediterranean style of eating. Sound Living is a weekly public affairs program produced by Research and Extension at Kansas State University. I'm Jeff Wickman, and this is the K-State Radio Network.